please welcome Pauline Finlay. Devil's rampage, France on delicate rooftops. Cathedral bells ring, we bow in pews as priests gather all of those who seek refuge. Children cry blood to nail anchored skin. No mercy for the meek, no justice for the righteous. Greed is the serpent that erects arousal for the wicked. Lustful arched backs that moan in the distance as winos sip whiskey that lacks its resistance. Children cry blood as mothers prostitute for embellishments love. Birds song unsung in absence of invisible tongues as asylums are filled with silent patients that look beyond chilled windowsills. Wisdom is no more as the selfish lavish themselves with the door. Gone are the good for man created this, following his own law to leave God's precious gift. Home is called Solace. I like snakes in my house. Snakes that filter and frolic through landscapes of illustrious felt filled fields between my thighs, somewhere between sorrow and want, releasing their carnal thoughts. Open mouth swallowing salty cream treats, bottom propped on pillows for visual intoxication, voices, octave above octave. Nails rip at sweaty skin. Cobra's fangs pierce deeply beneath my desires. The pinnacle of excitement causes me to yield forward, gusting and gushing like a forceful wind that is fleeting. God calls my name, but snakes defy lusty landfills. I am the nothingness of the day. He weeps and I feel the sting of his tears on my forehead like holy water scarring vampires. I let snakes in my house. Rattlesnakes that captivate, hypnotize, connive and deceive, searching for a host's wound to hold venomous replication. Pythons wrap around my body whole, squeezing the life out of me. Extended jaws swallow me whole like tasty rodents running from hot sands caught between their paws. But Wise is the owl that sits high above limbs of trees, watching my demise with great delight. The next poem is called Proceed with Caution. He was clandestine in his meetings with her and quixotic in the approach. Before the sweat could evaporate from his forehead and the diminished ejaculation considered re erection, she was a faded memory. Like the excitement of a carousel, good for a ride or two. Mm. His magnetic attraction to her exhumed itself in the carnality of phallic arousal as the image of him wiping his diffused remains of dying soldiers across her cheeks entered his mind. Beyond the brave horses, heat-stricken gnats swirl 360 degrees above his head in expeditious conviction without destination landings. The sun's scourging intensity pushes through wheat silks as scarecrow straw 
trickle beyond the lapel of his shirt. A kaleidoscope of emotion sweetens it all at once and she sees her distorted reflection within the fragments of shard glass surrounded by bold colors. The realization revived her consciousness into understanding. She is the jester for his entertainment. The pantomime of performance whose features he can't recall. A clown incarnate that conceals identity fool's paradise. It shook her to the core and the utopian daydream of happily ever after came crashing down. Violins, mandolins, and harps, sweet melodic composition became dismantled as she mutilated the nightingale in despair used. It ran through her mind like heroin through an axe veins used. Like a doormat that soaks up muck under a boot after a rainstorm used to satiate his sexual hunger. Her perplexed, phantasmagorical, perceptive thoughts of him were becoming diabolical. Dreams of dancing candlelight shimmering off her blades seemed to twinkle like a star's chatoyant brilliance. Sadly, she was reborn from fallacious tales. Moist, crumpled sheets, debased treatment, self-serving, egotistical desires. Peace could not restore the balance of equilibrium in her mind. And logic and reason fled her body like OJ from a crime scene. Yeah, yeah. A sphinx-like appearance started to reconfigurate her frame. Vengeance was hers, not the Lord's. His omnipresence held no relevance. Hold the silence before the storm, children. This story is of a daydream was amplified white noise and a mongrel's prepubescent contemptible behavior. Halloween night, she wore the wimple of a nun and cloaked herself in garb light. A gold-plated rosary swung from her neck. She pressed his doorbell. Trick so treat with a demure smile, she spun around like a samurai and thrusted a hatchet into his skull and plowed with cadence. The brevity of his life came to a catastrophic end, and his neighborated body became a celebrated delight for her octogenarian personality. She allotted him no time for derogatory comment. No time for a meticulously designed plan to get her back into bed. However, she did allow him to understand the pain. In a subdued pony in fashion, she asked the others, had they had enough red wine to drink that flowed through his arteries or membranes of flesh to eat, all onyx-colored eyes and maggot-laid lips, raised their head in unison, like a choir's last note floating on the air gave a resounding yes, and smiled with satisfaction for a vendetta well executed and a victory won. That is. Oh. My next poem is called The Dead Inside. I wrote it for my children. <laughs> Zombie nation of backwater bucket heads. Caskets birth the new generation of live walking corpses. And mummy's mute tongues hang null and void toward vibrations of speech. Thin shaven slivers of rotten flesh taste like the sweetness of nectar. As murder becomes the elixir for pleasure and invigorates the sexual appetite of man. Bombarded by bombastic bitterness, we are the dead inside. Sound the trumpets and beat the glockin' spiel as we continue to dance on the graves of our ancestors. We turn the tides of time to make mockery of God's laws, spitting in Jesus' cup and washing his feet in feces-infested urine. The wretched pretend to be oblivious in their walk to reap destruction as a new legion of demons are being released, practicing demonic wickedness from the hands of our children. Schoolyard executions of the mind will extract the word love from our vocabulary as if it never existed, and parents' hopelessness will continue to flourish. As we try to balance on the tightrope of trepidation, worldwide tyranny reigns from all corners of the earth, and mischievous excavations of white hooded robes that laid beneath centuries of dirt are being displayed upon our backs, re-enslaving ourselves in bondage, cuffing our limbs in shackles and cursing our future. The sparrow. The sparrow stands at the side of a vacant, dusty road, belting out hymnal notes that evaporate in the air. As he draws his last breaths, he too will be in the memory of no one. 
Fallen doves who are prey to vultures. Scavengers who feast on lambs, butchered babies as brunch delights. The dead inside kills all signs of hope. They kill each other as well as themselves, and they killed the sparrow. The day has come to stand still. Don't drink the myrrh from the forest with gladness, but pray to your savior for redemption. Moonlight enters the sky with the speed of a tortoise's stride as the dust of twilight clouds my daughter's alertness like lullabies that sway children to sleep. I go into her room and I say to her, my child, my child, don't ever jump off the edge of night. Hold your Bible in one hand and your faith in your heart. Don't look down upon the cracked skulls on which you stand disintegrating beneath the soles of your feet. Ignore the worms that will slither between your toes looking to know it's your innocent flesh. Never inhale the scent of death that surrounds you. But walk with believers. Look up. Because that day of jubilee will run again. Like the river Jordan. Holy Finland. Holy Finland. How about it?